Mahua, Moitraji. Thank Teen you, sir. Minute. Come gather round people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone for the times they are a-changing. Honorable Chairperson, sir, my esteemed colleagues, it is probably the first time that Bob Dylan has been quoted in this August House. But in these changing times, popular culture can sometimes do what great poetry and great prose can't, that is to strike a chord. It is unlikely that in this myopic environment of a Hindi, Hindu, and Hindutva-driven environment, that most people will have listened to Dylan. So let me again begin by repeating that the times are indeed a changing. From starting out as the Iron Man government, which prided itself on never budging from its position, the past 18 months have seen India transform itself into the land of the U-turn. The BJP government has finally realized that they better start swimming or they'll sink like a stone. I stand here today to speak on a discussion on the COVID pandemic, a pandemic whose official death toll is 4.7 lakhs, but all realistic unofficial records put the number at 10 times that, or 4 million people. This government only yesterday told us that it had no data on farmer deaths. Previously, it has told us it lacks data on migrant deaths. It has, is, it has no data on oxygen deaths. So frankly, we would much rather go with unofficial figures than the official figure. The pandemic started off on almost a celebratory note where the Prime Minister exhorted us all to gather outside, bang thalis, light diyas. When the government should have been ordering vaccines, it was actually propitiating the gods. The key errors that the government made in COVID management were along the following lines. Vaccine supply. The government always knew this was a double-dose vaccine. To vaccinate an adult population of 940 million people, India would need about 2 billion vaccines. Foreign vaccines had not been approved by India. Domestic production capacity was nowhere near what we needed. In May and June of 2020, we should have been ramping up production. We didn't. When the UK, the US, and the EU were investing in vaccines, which had not yet been cleared, and placing advance orders, these were high-risk investments, obviously. But India didn't make these investments, so they didn't get advance allotments, so we had a supply crunch. Halfway through the year, in mid May, May, June, the government said we would have 900 million vaccines by year end. But when they went to the Supreme Court and placed an affidavit, they said they would have only 500 million. I'm very glad today that this government has vaccinated a billion people, but a, a billion doses. But that is not due to the government. It is due to the fact that Covishield alone has ramped up production to 240 million doses a month. The next error was in the field of the rate of vaccination. The government claimed it would fully vaccinate all adults by year end 2021. However, as of today, we have given a double dose to only 48% of the adult population, which is not even half and a single dose to about 83% of adults. To reach this target by year end, that is another 20 days, we would have to vaccinate 18, 19 million people a day. Today we are doing only 9 million people a day. What is the problem in increasing double dose coverage? You know what the problem is? Because when we took down the names of people who were getting the first dose, we took only their phone numbers. The government didn't take their addresses. Now we have a vast rural population, urban slums, migrant labor, so when, with the harvest season going on and poor rural connectivity, you're trying to contact these people to chase up on double dosage, we're not getting much success. So we need physical teams to go house to house. In India, now we are busy playing catch up. There is complete silence on third booster shots for the vulnerable, as well as vaccines for children and under 18s. There's a battle outside and it's raging. It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls for the times they are changing. These changing times caused the government to do three rapid U-turns in vaccine policy. The government's original vaccine policy required people under 45 to pay for their vaccines. The Supreme Court called this arbitrary and irrational, and it also breached the fundamental rights of Indians, Article 14, Article 21. The center first states said states should pay more than the center, then they backed down. Then they first said that private hospitals have the right to fix prices, then they backed down. The line it is drawn, the curse it is cast. The second wave of the pandemic laid bare how grossly unequipped our healthcare systems were. 
when several factors were responsible for the pandemic, not all of which can be blamed on the government, an easily preventable dimension of this was that oxygen shortage should never have happened in India. Independent researchers have documented that between April and May 2021, over 700 patients died due to oxygen shortage alone. In early April, it was clear Five we had minutes. a problem. I have Five two minutes, minutes more, sir. On two minutes, sir. Already, two minutes, please, sir. please, within one minute Please, now. please, sir. Please. Two minutes, sir. Two minutes. I'm very sorry, but parties ask you. In early April, it was clear there was a problem. Numbers were exceeding 270,000 a day. Yet the Prime Minister was lauding a huge crowd in a Bengal election rally. The Shahi Snan at the Kumbh for lakhs of people continued. The Chief Minister of Uttarakhand said, we have faith in God and in Mother Ganga. Let me point out a very brief timeline of who said what. 27 January 2021, World Economic Fa um, Forum, Davos. Honorable Prime Minister declares India has succeeded in defeating, containing corona effectively. 21st February 2021, the BJP passes a resolution glorifying the Prime Minister and stating that India has defeated corona solely due to him. 7th March 2021, the Health Minister says we are in the end game of the COVID-19 pandemic in India. And then, Parul Khakkar says, the majority of the narrative that this government was propagating through its intermediaries and via its power is slowly but surely disintegrating. The first of these is the office of the PMO. In a democracy, one should be able to fairly criticize Shri the Bola highest Singh elected Ji. office. Sir, this is not fair, sir. Janardhan Singh, please, sir, no, got no, nine no. minutes. Please, please, Tejas, we got nine minutes, minutes sir. Please, Six let me finish. Six minutes now. Today, I stand. Bola Singh Ji. No, sir, please, let me finish. This is not Shri fair, Ji, sir. Sir, this Dhanavad. is not fair. You. Dhanavad, sir, Pati Mahode.